Let me, let me let him see who he is and go through life. I'm going to teach him from all of this stuff when I bring him into the kingdom. I'm going to use the attitude. I'm going to use the swagger, all that football flavor he got. That's going to be in the kingdom. I'm going to release him into his purpose. All the excitement he producing over here in this worldly thing, I'm going to bring that into the kingdom. I'm going to seal it under my spirit. I'm going to humble him in his heart to know it ain't about, listen to this, his glory that he was getting over there. But I'm going to have him use those same talents and gifts for my glory. I gave them to you then, even though you were stealing my stuff for up the road when I would call you into the kingdom. There are pimps right now who supposed to be preaching. They're using the gift the wrong way. They got the power to persuade. They just ain't been released into their real ministry yet. And so everything are sinful days, are days that saints under the blood of Christ have already been ordered, taken into account by the king. Your life is in his hands. The question is, how clearly do you recognize that? Are you living as if your life is in his hands? Are you living as if your future is in his mind and heart? And you need to seek him out to find out what the next step is. Or are you trying to figure it out? Right. Well, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, that sounds like that'll work. And you're just trying stuff when we can just listen to this. Die so we can live in him. Die to self so we can live to him because his plan, listen to this, will work. If we've been bought by the blood and we belong to him, he's going to make sure our plan don't work. He's going to fight it because our plan robs him of his glory. He's going to fight it on every corner. He's going to cut us off at the pass. Right when we thought it was about to happen, he's going to make it not happen. And we're going to be disappointed and disappointed and disappointed until we finally look up and say, Lord, help me. He said, I've been waiting on that. Let's go. He's going to do what he has planned for our lives. Let's keep going. I'm coming back to you, sis. He says, every branch that bears fruit, he purges, and sometimes that purging is rough, that it may bring forth more fruit. I got to do some stuff you don't like, but the stuff that I'm doing is going to make you more of what I want you to be. So that's why we got to be in a place to trust him. Trust him. He uses everything. Think about this. Me and my wife have been struggling a little bit in terms of spending time with each other, and it's more my fault. I'm so busy doing a lot of stuff. What did God do? I want to fix that. Get the car wrecked, the hood gone, sit the car down. Now you take her to work, drop her off, bring her home, do all this stuff. Now y'all riding and talking. <laughs> you're not going to mess my stuff up Larry right. <laughs> you not I'll give you money to fix that and get it back on the road but I ain't even in a rush to do that right. yeah. but look what he did he made me not be clueless why is this happening what's going on man and even though I still had those feelings that rise he said remember what I already told you I'm doing something through this now, go on and drive from work, cancel that meeting, go get her, and come on back, and then go to Bible study. Don't You ain't got time to be mad all day. Get over that. Remember what I told you. So he has to remind us, listen to this, here's his word, of what I said. So we got to go back to him, his voice, his word. Fights through that because my flesh going to do what it's going to do. It's going to rise up because that's the only response the flesh has. The spirit must kick in to rise above the flesh and put, listen to this scripture, put the flesh under subjection. You stop talking to me because if you keep talking, you're going to make my attitude shift and then I'm going to be feeling a little funny around here. But if the spirit kick in, get the flesh down, now I can live out God's will, even though the flesh still said, but we ain't got to do it. The Lord like, man, be quiet. Let's keep driving. Be quiet. Don't even look for no answers or no reasons why. You already know why. Listen to this. In my bigger scheme of things, and this, listen, it's going to produce something that you really want. Don't fight it. Amen. Trust me. This is the experience of every believer. 
every born again child of God, your way will be resisted. Yes. God's way will be performed. The circumstances may be different. The approach yes. God takes, but the goal is the same, yes. that we will all be brought to the confession that let your will be done in my life. Listen, and we want his will to be done. Like we want it. Like I want you to get the glory out of my life. I live my life for all this other stuff and was passionate about it. Now I need to. I want you to get every ounce of purpose and destiny you have in me out of me, so that I can. When I enter in, I want to enter in knowing that the job. Listen to this. That he gave me to do, and that. And here's my focus. That he performed through me was done the way he wanted done. That includes my strugglings and my successes. All of that is factored in and part of God's plan because sometimes he let us struggle to keep us humble. You ain't all that. Look at you. You're not, you're not all that. Don't get beside yourself. you still you. You only you. So hold on, sis. Hold on. You only doing something powerful because of me at work in you. And so I'm going I'm to just take my hand off for a second. In my safety, because you're still in my hand, you're not going to fall away, but I'm going to let you trip on and fall. A righteous man falls seven times, but the Lord will pick him up. So he's going to let us fall in his permissive will. He's going to permit it to be so to teach us more about our weakness so we can depend on him for our strength. Let's get back on this text. I want to finish this before we do. So he says, he purges every branch that bears fruit so that it can bring forth more fruit. There's more he wants to do in us. Listen to this. Even what you know right now. We have not arrived. He's not done or else we're on our way to glory. I'm supposed to die when he finished his work with me. When my course is finished, I'm supposed to pass away. I'm not, there's nothing else. Everything else is doing. It's like, well, I didn't plan that. That wasn't what I wanted. Like, we threw when I'm through, I'm leaving. But here's the blessing. I will not leave or be put in a position to be incapable of doing what I'm supposed to do while I'm here. If tomorrow I'm supposed to get blinded in this eye because it's going to do something about my sensitivity to the will of God and put me in a different kind of position and open me up to a different kind of people, tomorrow I'm going to be blinded in this eye. And it ain't going to be, oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's so tragic. No, if that happened, God going to use this for his glory some kind of way. I may not even know while I'm blinded, I'm in the hospital, I'm kind of mad and disappointed. I can't see no more out of this eye. But I got to get my eyes up at some point to say, God, you, you could have stopped that. You didn't. What are you trying to show me? Uh, he said, I'm coming to get the other eye because I want you to walk like Eli in a few minutes. The book of Eli. But again... The focus is not on all of that stuff. The focus is on God. Whatever your way is, it's right. The devil ain't snuck one in on you and did something to me that you didn't want to happen, and now you're sitting back there scratching your head. That ain't going to ever happen with our God. He going to do what pleases him from start to finish. Do we trust him is the question he has. Because he may say, I may send a blinded eye, and let me see how you preach now. Let me see how you love me and my people now. Are you so focused on what you look like because your eye messed up? Let me get at, let me get at that flesh because I may have to do something to the flesh so that you don't rob me of my glory. I may have to mess up a leg or something or whatever, but again, I'm using these examples so that we don't get focused on trying to have a perfect set of circumstances to live our lives for God. He say, now live for me with one eye. Keep living. What you going to do? You going to stop now? You going to have a pity party forever though? Like, it's okay to be sad for a few minutes, but forever? Is you going to get out of that and get back to the plan? Like, the plan ain't changed. I did. So, again, our focus must be on God, have your way in me, regardless of the circumstance. Are we ruled by what we go through and deal with? 